News Reading News Review and Rob Reading America's independent voice. Unemployment has become a part of all of us. It really has, and that's the problem. Unemployment is sky high right now, surging back up for the black community, down for whites. One of the things that we know about Martin Luther King's legacy is that he fought at the end for poor people's rights, for the rights of poor people. A lot of people forget that. They only remember him for I Have a Dream. But there is even more of Martin Luther King to remember now more than ever. There is an exceptional documentary coming out on the Reverend A.D. Williams King, the younger brother of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. A.D. King, the untold story is due to hit theaters sometime in May. Here is a bit of the trailer. A.D. King, as we called him, uh, was Martin's younger brother. Uh, Christine was the oldest, Martin was second, and then A.D. He was my pastor and also a friend, not only to our church, but the whole community. He was one of about four preachers that, uh, for, along with Fred Shuttlesworth, invited us to come into Birmingham. Uh, he went to jail in Birmingham with his brother. We couldn't go in the public facilities, so they started using the churches. And we started having mass meetings at the churches. And a lot of people saw Martin Luther King Jr., but they didn't see A.D. Williams King, who was really uh, some of that inspiration that I saw that Dr. King got because they was close. A.D. was uh, almost as good a preacher as Martin. A lot of us would watch him preach, and he was one of the preaching rascals that God put down here. We would try to pick up terms from him uh, in his ministry. I don't think that his objective was to get out so that a lot of people would know him. His word would speak for him. He was the one that really instituted and led that open housing uh, demonstration and marches to bring about the open occupancy law. It was uh, Louisville, Kentucky, under the leadership of uh, A.D. King, Leo Lesser, uh, uh, and Reverend Kirby in Louisville today. Uh, the church that uh, he pastored in Louisville, Kentucky, is like a monument. And a lot of people go there basically because that's the church that A.D. pastored at. That is part of the documentary, of course, A.D. King, The Untold Story. We have the documentary filmmaker with us, Josetta Shroshire. She's here. Thank you for coming on, Josetta. Well, thank you so much for inviting me, Rob. This really is a pleasure to talk with you and to share Reverend A.D.'s story. Wow. Well, you know, let me just say, when I saw this release, of course, you know, I'm from Atlanta. I'm born and raised from here. And I said, you know, I, I've got to do something on this. This is important. And I couldn't think of a better day to do it on. We're talking about unemployment news, talking about jobs news, talking about the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King from a different vantage point and the significance of his brother, A.D. King. I mean, this is going to give us a whole new insight on Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. But first, let's talk a little bit about A.D. King. Uh, this film uh, and the way it's done is done with Ambassador Andy Young, former Mayor Andy Young, Congressman John Lewis, Alveda King, and uh, Kristen uh, Ferris, King Ferris, of course, uh, and others. This is a, uh, a profile of him. Why is A.D. King an important figure? A.D. King is a very important figure because he is an unsung hero. He was right there crafting a lot of the strategies on the front lines of the civil rights movement, working on the behalf of poor people and African-American people and disenfranchised people. And his story has just not been told. This man paid the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, his life was cut short prematurely. People need to know that. There's a whole story uh, behind what went on with Dr. Martin Luther King and Reverend A.D. Williams King was right there all along, putting his life in danger for folks. And we need to know that he sacrificed and what a tremendous sacrifice the family has made. Now, you talked about his life being cut short. How was it cut short? He was a found drowned, allegedly, in his swimming pool at the age of 38 and a half. He was uh, a few days from 
turning 39, uh, there is a lot of controversy surrounding his death. Uh, there was really ne- a never a formal autopsy that was performed. There's a lot of speculation that he was murdered, just like Dr. King, but because of the times that we were living in then. In 1969, there was a lot of confusion, a lot of turmoil going on. Uh, Dr. King was killed. A few months later, Robert Kennedy was killed. Uh, people were being murdered right and left. And when A.B. Uh, turned up dead, nobody wanted to touch it. It was just, just too hot for people to handle. So uh, not much investigation has been done, but there's a lot of suspicion. Uh, a lot of people that I talk to feel the same way, that that man did not die of natural causes by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, this is fascinating stuff. We're talking about A.D. Kane, the untold story. We're going to come back in a moment, and we're going to talk about, of course, he's the brother of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Talk about how he assisted Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King in his journey. We're talking to the documentary filmmaker of A.D. King. Ms. Roshire is with us, and we are going to continue with more of Ready News Review, the show, and this important film due out in May. Back in moments with more of Reading News Review, the show. This is Reading News Review. Rob Reading America's independent voice, 855. Rob 3080 to get into the radio program, 855-762-3080 to get into the radio show. We're talking about the brand new documentary that's due out in just a few short weeks in May on Alfred Daniel King. You should know that name very well, A.D. King, the brother of slain civil rights leader MLK. Uh, We're talking with Ms. Shropshire about the film, which is due out soon. We were talking about A.D. King and how he lived and how he died How did he contribute to Martin Luther King? I think one of the most important ways that A.D. King contributed to Dr. Martin Luther King was support. These were lifelong friends. They were brothers, so they knew one another very well. They loved each other dearly. They were always together in terms of family events. But for civil rights, they were support systems to one another. There were a lot of times where uh, Reverend A.D. would go into an area like Birmingham, which was a a hotbed of uh, hatred in the 1960s, and he opened up his church so that Dr. King could come in and really rally uh, everyone. Uh, There were times when Dr. King would be in one area and he would ask Reverend A.D. to go to another city and keep the movement going in Louisville and Chicago. So they were uh, counterparts. They helped one another. There was a lot of synergy. Uh, They played off of each other. And it just uh, imagine a support system where you know you can trust this person. And that's what Reverend A.D. was to Dr. King. It, it, part of this, you talk about how he is said to have sacrificed to assist Dr. Martin Luther King, quote, uh, the SCLC, in every step along the way. Well, I would I have to say that's absolutely true. Reverend A.D. was there. He took time away from his family to be wherever the civil rights movement needed him. Both of those men traveled constantly. They were all crisscrossing the country, going wherever necessary to uh, help support people's freedom fights. Um, Reverend A.D., uh, it just has a tremendous legacy, and the purpose of this film is to get his message out, to let people know what he did for civil rights, how he spoke out, and how he was not afraid. This man was courageous, just as Dr. Martin Luther King was courageous as well. Let's talk about that a little bit, because, of course, we talked about his death, A.D. King's death. Of course, we all know about Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's death, but there were some rumors that he was going to take over the SCLC. He, according to some people, hadn't really expressed an interest in that. What have you found about that it, it was he intending on leading in his brother's uh, uh, footsteps after his brother's death? I think 
it depends on who you talk with in terms of whether Reverend A.D. was planning on taking over the civil rights movement, uh, the SCLC. One of the things that he was uh, adamant about was making sure that the SCLC stayed together and moved forward. Uh, there was some infighting. There were different people who thought that the SCLC should go in one direction or another. But uh, Reverend A.D. went to the helm, and he and Ralph Abernathy worked together to make sure that the SCLC stayed on track and that the Poor People's Campaign moved forward. Uh, so uh, I, Reverend A.D. had a vested interest in making sure that the movement continued. I think uh, one of the things that worked to his detriment, unfortunately, was that he looked so much like Dr. Martin Luther King and sounded so much like Dr. Martin Luther King. And I think there were people that considered him a threat because he and his brother were so very similar. Wow. It actually worked against him. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, when you look at, well, I guess it worked against RFK, too, because, you know, he looked and sounded a lot like his brother as well. I mean, you know, RFK, JFK, it didn't really help him either. I mean, they both were laid out in pine boxes. So uh, I guess I could see your point there. That that really wouldn't work in your favor, especially if your brother was assassinated and uh, yeah. then you turn up dead. Um, let me ask yeah. you, what was the most startling thing you found uh, that we can look forward to viewing in your documentary coming up uh, in a few weeks here? What was the most startling thing that you found that you didn't expect to find? Well, one of the most startling things that I discovered uh, was Reverend A.D.'s widow. She is still alive. Her name is uh, Mrs. Naomi Barber King. And uh, she's an amazing woman to have lived through all that she's lived through, and she's not at all bitter. That's what's amazing to me, to uh, have so many uh, people that you love taken from you uh, unexpectedly and to be at the point in life where you can be gracious and can still smile and can still wish well upon people. I think that she was a, a surprising element. And then the other thing is that uh, this man's story has been so totally overlooked by mainstream media. Uh, it, a lot of times it's, 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 it's as if he did not even exist. There are so few uh, stories about him, uh, news clips mostly focus on Dr. Martin Luther King, and rightfully so, but Reverend A.D.'s story is certainly valid, important, and worth telling. Wow. Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, how can we learn more about the film? The best way to learn more about the film is to help us get this film out of post-production. We are in post-production now. Uh, just for your information, we've been working on this film for very close to five years, so it's taking quite a bit of time, effort, energy, and we are needing uh, additional resources, finances, to help us get this completed. So if anybody wants to help us, go to kickstarter.com and type in A.D. King, The Untold Story, and uh, our piece will come up. Please contribute whatever you can, $1, $5, $10, anybody who's feeling really generous, uh, $1,000, whatever you can, uh, to help us complete this documentary, get it out of post-production, and distribute it for the world to see. All right, we're going to post a link on our website as well as a story about your film coming out. Josetta Shoshire, we appreciate you for taking out the time to come on the program, and good fortune to you in making a real great movie about a great man that really needs to be seen by a great deal of people. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you inviting me. All right. This is Ready News Review. I'm Rob Redding, America's Independent Voice. We'll give you the latest on Barack Obama and what's going on with those Harvard tapes in just a moment.